when you help your children with homework, are you doing it in your home language or in the school language? Should we actually teach our children how to do maths and talk about all STEM subjects in our home languages too? I know I struggled with this when my children started school in English, so in another language that we used at home. The fact is that when our children become older, it becomes even more complex bridging between school and home language. And what parents and teachers need to realize is that fostering home languages in all school subject areas is not as easy as it seems. And maybe we shouldn't even do it. This is why I want to share with you some tips on how to support multilingual children with their STEM homework. So watch until the end. When it comes to helping multilingual children with their schoolwork, especially in maths and science subjects, but also other subjects for that ma uh, matter, it's tempting to translate everything into our home language. I tried to do this with my children, but I quickly realized that this was just not helping because they would easily get frustrated and lose interest and they, they considered homework as a very heavy burden because we were trying to go through the subjects in three languages, two home languages and one school language. Turns out that it is actually much better for our children to solve problems, explain procedures, analyze, infer about various topics in the language they have learned it, so the school language. And this process actually helps our children build confidence in the academic language, watch it, what they need. Now, research shows that multilingual children benefit from developing subject-specific skills like uh, mathematical reasoning or scientific inquiry in the school language. This way, they can apply those skills more confidently in their academic setting. Think of it as a part of the process called scaffolding. This is where we provide structured support helping children reach the new levels of understanding by guiding them at first and then gradually reducing that support. Now, in this case, the school language acts as the first scaffold, enabling children to problem solve in the language they'll need most in the class. And later, if this is possible and if the children are up for it, I'm going to talk about this in a moment, later we can build additional scaffolds by introducing terms in the home language or home languages to deepen their understanding. Now it's much more effective if we follow the lead of our children and let them choose the topics they are currently interested in the most and that they are more likely to want to share about also in our home languages with us or other family members or friends. Now let me make an example. When our children are working on a math problem, we let them reason through the problem in the school language first. They need to understand the question, and analyze it and explain their thinking. No need to rush to translate every detail into our home language, so stop. It would only slow down the process of assimilation and also the pace of our communication. It would also be quite unnatural because, think about it, would you want to learn new things in all your languages simultaneously? No, right? So, like François Grosjean said many, many years ago, we don't automatically translate things we learn in one language into the other. We store it in that language, we process it in that language. And this is where most research leads us in the wrong direction because they assume that our children have a higher level of fluency in the home language than the second or the school language. But it's not the case. Our children might be very fluent in speaking the home language, but when it comes to subject areas like, like maths and all the STEM subjects, they lack the vocabulary. So after learning the subject in the school language, understanding the concepts and becoming confident in explaining them in the school language, our children might be ready to learn it also in their home language. I say might because let's be real, it's a lot we are asking there. Let's now assume that our children are ready to make this transfer. The time in between becoming confident in the subject and transferring it to the home language depends on many factors, like our children's level of uh, comprehension, their fluency in both languages, and uh, precisely in the target language, our home language in this context, and the readiness to make it happen. Yes, because we not always want or need to transfer these skills into all our languages. Let me ask you. Can you explain complex equations in all your languages at the same pace? Do you know all the necessary terms without looking them up now on the spot? I really guess not. Well, maybe with some exceptions, but so why should our children need to be able to do this? 
So by allowing our children to work through this process in the academic language first, we are scaffolding their cognitive development. Then, once they grasp the concept in the school language, and they can explain it and talk about it in different settings, we can then introduce the relevant terms in our home language. And this way, the home language becomes an additional layer of understanding and not a shortcut or a crutch. This method builds strong, flexible learners who can then think, explain and analyze and infer in multiple languages. Now, I talked about this in my Facebook group, Multilingual Families, and here is a comment by Raffaella. She gave me the consent to share it on screen. With my daughter, I realized I was confusing her a lot using Italian when helping her in maths. English is the school language. For example, talking decine o unita, in English it's just tens and ones. So that whole concept was tricky. Or think how you tell the time. So we switched to English for homework. Then you have kids who are very gifted in maths and can switch automatically, like my son does, but I think it's safer to stick to the school language. Now I explain how scaffolding between school and home languages works in my webinars, workshops, trainings and in my courses. If you want to know how to do this in specific uh, topic areas, don't hesitate to ask in the comments or contact me directly. You can find the link in the description. Now let's assume, like I said before, that our children are ready to learn some terms and reasonings in our home language. What is very likely to happen here is that they will switch between the two or more languages whilst explaining. This is perfectly normal. If you have watched one of my videos about this, you know that is, this mixing is a sign that our children are processing complex information using all the linguistic resources available for them. It is a very natural part of multilingual learning, but it is also a sign for us or maybe also the teachers, should they want to do this in class, that our children are still learning the new terms. So they need to use these terms more frequently in a variety of contexts in order to use them consistently and in the right way and with confidence in the target language. And this requires practice and patience. Now, one great way to scaffold our children's learning without relying too much on language is to use visual aids. Diagrams, charts or hands-on models help children understand maths and science concepts visually and conceptually rather than needing everything explained in words. I'll give you an example from the escapeprojects.ca website and link to it also in the description. Now, remember that the goal is to give just enough support to our children to help them grasp the concept. Then take the step back and let them work independently. Over time, they will become more confident in explaining these concepts in both the school language and our home language, if this is the goal. And all this, of course, to the extent they choose to do this and they feel the need to do it. Now, to summarize, scaffolding is key. We can let our children engage with maths and STEM subjects with everything they're learning in the school language first, providing just enough support to help them understand and succeed. And afterwards, we can introduce the home language terms to reinforce their understanding. If we do this consistently from the beginning, I mean, if we create a habit, a bridge between the school and the home language for the subjects and uh, topics that they choose, they will be able to take it from there independently. No need for us to hang around all the time. This will not only help them academically, but also develop stronger multilingual skills. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video and you found it helpful, don't forget to subscribe and check out more videos on how to raise confident multilingual children. And feel free to leave any questions or comments below. I'd love to hear from you and start or continue a conversation about this.